Yeah, Luke, you know you're spilling some fluid, right? I mean, it's above the rear main, you said? Off easy, right? Oh, it, it wouldn't help us. It's a way up high. Okay. Down the side over here. Welcome to another episode of On The Trail. I'm Mike Sabunchi and we are here in Washington State in the Fortune Creek area of the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest. Why would we come to such a wonderful place? Well, because Seattle has about three and a half million people inside it and it can get really crowded. But if you just drive outside the city, you can find yourself in some amazing landscape like this behind me. We are in the Fortune Creek area of the Okanagan Wenatchee National Forest, uh, just a couple hours outside of Seattle. Uh, we're gonna take this trail up to one of the most picturesque lakes up here called Gallagher Head Lake. It's gonna be awesome. With me today, I got my longtime friend, almost 20 years, Kyle, uh, Kyle Saito, and I got my new friend, Luke Schumann from Hazard Fab Works. Uh, Kyle, what did you bring out today? So I brought a 91 Nissan Patrol. I imported it from Australia. It's uh, on 37 inch ridge grapplers. It has four inches of lift, front locker, skid plates, rock sliders, overlanding gear. Nice, it looks pretty awesome. Thank you. All right, Luke, we saw Kyle's car. What the heck is that thing behind me? Uh, that's, a, that's a mullet of a Jeep we've been calling it. It's, uh, it's a 91 Jeep Wrangler, tub and frame, a CJ nose, it's LS powered. It's got the Jeep manual transmission. It's got fabricated 10 inch housings. Of course, then I'm running the 40 inch Nitto trail grappler on a trail ready forge beat load. And I have the most mild vehicle. I got a 2009 GX470 on 35 inch Nitto tire recon grapplers. We've got a mild lift and uh, some overland bits. And that's about it. We have a nice mix of vehicles for the trail today. Three different Nitto tires, three different sizes, uh, three different vehicles all on the same trail. It should be a fun day. When you're wheeling anywhere, there's always a list of essentials that you need to bring. These are some core essentials, food, water, shelter, maybe some uh, tire inflator or deflator kits. Those things are a must, but wherever you wheel, terrain is different. So Luke, what are some things that we need specifically for wheeling in, the, in this yeah, area? I'd say specifically in the Northwest, um, I'm a big advocate for a chainsaw. Um, not only are you cutting a tree out of the trail, you might need to stay late and build a fire. I've also had to, cut a tree down and skid Jeeps out with broken axles or broken knuckles all the way out of the trail. And you can't do that without a chainsaw. Kyle, uh, what else? Well, Washington, of course, gets a lot of rain. So the trails get very slick. So it's good to have a locking device uh, in your rig, or if you don't, a winch to winch from the trees or recovery boards to get you up the trail. A uh, locking device, if you, if you can get one, yeah. recovery boards, winches, and some tools, some, some warm clothes, a chainsaw, look at all these trees around us. And then obviously that core list um, wherever you're wheeling, you always want to be as safe as possible. Read the forums, ask a local, read the guides, read the guidebooks, uh, be prepared. You can never be too prepared and you can always be underprepared. So uh, always be as safe as you can. And uh, now that we're with the pros and we got the essentials locked down, we're going to go hit the trail. the rig down around 19 psi and it's soaking up all these like just rocks and rough road i mean it's definitely different terrain than i'm used to in california in california it's a lot more dirt whereas this is a lot more just exposed rock Good 
This is living for me. This is as good as it gets. I was just telling the other guys, nothing quite fires me up like being in the woods. The energy it gives me and it's kind of a down low in your soul. Life is good. Where else would you rather be kind of energy? You put your Jeep together and you go take it out where no one else can go or most people don't ever see. It's as good as it gets to me, man. This is, this is why I do this stuff. I'm lucky enough to do it for a living. It's awesome. How you doing? I heard you might need a jack. Yeah, yes. okay. we definitely could use a jack. We got you. <laughs> well, this thing is not made for this. Like, let's turn around. And we're driving down, and all of a sudden, you just hear, like, poof. Oh, she's like, hey, we just got a flat tire. I'm like, no, 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 no. Well, we're, we're heading up to Gallagher Head Lake, and uh, uh, we, we saw a van on the side of the road with a jack or the flat, and uh, we happen to have a bottle jack on board the, the Lexus. Whenever you come up to a, a location like this, you always got to make sure you have something to get yourself out or radio, lifeline. Uh, something as simple as a bottle jack and luckily we got one so we can get them up and out whenever you're on the trail and you see somebody stranded stop and help it's, it might happen to you one day you might need help like and he uh, said we could be the only people he sees i mean they've been up here for two days so you know it's probably a blessing that we came by and we'll hopefully be able to get him out of here i'll get in there i'll go until i get a little air compressor patch kit we'll get him there you go. Looks like a rock just poked in between the tread, which happens. You see these little bars down here? Sometimes those are wear bars, but if you look at a Nitto tire, a lot of times they have a step in the tread, and that's to kick rocks out so they don't do that. Little tire tech. We're prepared for everything except for a jack. <laughs> you know, like it's <laughs> the one thing that we needed right now. We all have rods on you. It's awesome. I think you're good. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah. Like you guys are, are heroes. <laughs> yeah, Luke, you know you're spilling some fluid, right? It's, it's not... oil. Oh, sh down the this side over here. here. Oh, got it, when you moved up. It's so, above the rear main, you said? No, it, that wouldn't help us, it's a way up high. It's, it's, okay. Well, just to see it. I mean, it's a lot, so like, even if there's little tiny ones up here, that's nothing compared to what we're seeing. Yeah, I started smelling a little while ago. I smelled it, I smelled it, I've been smelling it all day, but yeah, I've never seen it leak. It looks uh, Jeep sprung an oil leak. I don't know, we're trying to figure out where it's from and how much oil he even has in the engine right now. Well, I'm sure it's got plenty in here, I just have a hard time telling what it could be from. I hope those things are like lava. <laughs> hot, dang hot! <laughs> oh yeah, the, uh, the factory sensor that controls the oil pressure gauge in a truck, this 5.3 uh, truck motor, Somewhere along the way in my shenanigans, that sensor um, has failed. And now there's oil bubbling out the top of the sensor out where the, it's a two-prong connector. Um, I am gonna put some of the JB Weld quick set in that sensor. So this here is one of those things you always bring. They call it steel stick, but it sticks to everything. I fixed radiators with it. An oil leak in this case is exactly what this is gonna be for. This is one of those kits you should always have in your glove box. We'll knead it together. We'll put it in that sensor. We'll let it set up a little bit and we should be good to go. A lot of oil in that sensor still. It's got a little pinhole in it, but so far it's just a pinhole. It's not fixed, but it's better. It'll be fixed once you find a parts store. As long as it's not oil dripping fast and running out, we're okay. Just a little seep I can deal with. Huh? See what happens. Play by us. I guess, yeah, if I put this near the oil pan, I mean, it's gonna be tight. Should be down there by you, so. So when he slides off the edge, it takes both of us. I'm on the new Nitto Tire All-Terrain Tire Recon Grappler. 
And I do have a 35 1250 fitment on my rig and it is soaking everything up. And there hasn't been one wheel slip once. I'm in four low and I'm crawling up this hill. I'm not really punching it. I'm just going real nice and slow and nothing has slipped. This is fantastic. pressure so it's squirting out of our fix. Well it's got a little pressure it's fine it's not like we have anything hard to do from here. We're this close to the lake so we might as well end up at the lake um, and then when it comes time to turn around I mean it runs fine it's doing everything it's supposed to. I may go in front if I can so I can just kind of motor. That works. Yeah let's go a little ways I mean it's leaking but it's not it's not like it's running out. Off-roading in a big couch. It doesn't get easier. They definitely want you to earn this trail. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. What an amazing trail that was. Holy cow. Thank you guys for, for picking an amazing trail and, and joining me. That was quite the ride. Yes, glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. going back down is going to be quite a treat. You know, the thing with that trail is as we got up higher and higher and higher, the trail got harder and harder and harder. The obstacles weren't necessarily king of the hammers lines technical or the hardest thing you're ever gonna do in your rig, but they require just that much more commitment. Not only are you further away from the, where you started, but you're going over things that are increasingly more difficult. Uh, so being prepared really plays a huge role. Luke, walk us through the day. Um, that trail got harder and harder and harder. And yeah, uh, that was, it was really cool. I think, uh, you know, a trail like that, you're getting into it, you're getting more committed. You know, we came across a guy that had been there for two days on the side because he didn't have a jack. We helped him out and right there I sprung a leak and we had to work through some issues there. Um, I was lucky enough to have some oil and feel comfortable going on and not have it to be too big of a problem. But, you know, at the end of the day, we made it to the lake. It's beautiful. And uh, I mean, look at this. It's incredible. Walk us through some of like, you know, what to be, how do you need to prepare yourself for something like that? Yeah, I mean, that. In this case specifically, I had engine oil. I had a way to make a repair to slow down the leak. Um, you know, that preparedness with whether it's a hose clamp or engine oil or your JB Weld putty or whatever it's going to take, just having those little things in your toolkit or wherever it's going to be to be able to make that decision whether I'm, I'm done, whether I'm towing out or I'm continuing on. And, and being really prepared for anything that can happen. Uh, another thing is, you know, the time slips away from you. Absolutely. It took us all Absolutely. day to come up here. Yeah. It's only six miles. Yeah, well, that little that little break, I mean, realistically, it took us two hours, you know, and you're letting things dry, and yeah, we call it lunch, but realistically, that was a two-hour snafu right. um, because of a simple thing of a, of a sensor cracked and made a leak. Right. So. Right. And with that said, two hours, right? You're up here. Uh, the day is going by. Things can change. The trail can change. Kyle, you were just up here recently, and this trail was a completely different beast. It was, yes. There was uh, snow all the way on the south side, yeah. and it was running down the trail pretty much. So oh, wow. pretty much what you want to do is plan for four seasons. You don't know if you're going to get mud or, or dry rocks when you come up here. Right, and the bottom of the trails might be different than the top of the trail. So if you're going to go and attempt something like this, make sure you prepare yourself. 
bring somebody's, have an escape plan, plan it all the way through, read the guides, talk to some friends, uh, prepare yourself, over prepare yourself, have redundancies in place and make smart decisions. Thank you guys so much for joining us. It was an amazing journey. Thank you so much to Nitto and Driving Line for getting us here. A uh, special thank you for both of you guys for joining me. Thanks a lot. It was awesome. Oh yeah, it was amazing. You guys ready to jump in the lake? Definitely. I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> it's getting smelly around here. <laughs> I'm ready to jump in the lake, head back down the trail. Uh, if you like this video, drop us a comment below, like, subscribe, let us know where you want us to go next, and we will see you on the trail.